How's it going guys? Today we are taking over Wii's studio with Seth from Wii Knives, super stoked man. We are talking about some big news. So Wii and Civivi, well Wii is turning nine years old. But it's like That's Wii right. and Civivi, it's a, it's a package, you guys know this, it's a package deal. They have a bunch of your favorite knives on sale, which is really exciting. So to commemorate that, I thought it'd be really fun to kind of break down a little bit of Wii's history, some of the amazing designers that they work with, and some of the new stuff. And some of this new stuff you're gonna expect I think some of it's gonna surprise you because some of it's really, really cool. So I'm really excited to jump into this thing. And I gotta say with Seth on camera, cause you guys have heard me say this before, your guys' support has been huge for our channel. Like we would not have been able to go full time with this thing if it wasn't for Wii, so thank you. Course, for that we're support. Happy to happy to jump like, in and be part. Yeah, big deal. And we're really excited to be here and breaking down some of this stuff. Now, let's start where we started. Now, and you guys have heard me say this on camera a lot before as well. A lot of the early Wii designs were immaculate, and they still are. Just great designs, great build. A lot of them were weird, and they were not for me. Mm -hmm. But I loved it because I feel like they were kind of breaking the knife world out of like these patterns that it had been in. So what, what do we have here for some like representation of some of this early stuff for you guys who haven't seen some of this stuff? Absolutely. So the earliest version of a Wii knife that I have is this 620 right here. Yeah, it's like now, seven, eight years old, somewhere in that range. Yeah, it, was right? one, yeah, yeah. it would have been one of the first models that was released. So they, they started with the 600 series, went to 700 series, and then they started giving them names. Right, which was, is good. Right. Names are always better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so much easier to remember yes. a name than the 620 <laughs> yes. and, and what that is. This is kind of like a barn find. Like this just like showed up. I, I got a, some kind of a, this random package and there was like a couple dozen of these 620s in it. Awesome, right? And yeah, like, like a, from a warehouse return or something. That's awesome. Because they're, they're kind of hard to find. Yeah, 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 because you, you don't make them anymore, right? I don't feel like right. there's a lot of people collecting that are like, oh, I have the first wheat knife, right? Yeah. But uh, start looking for them, because I think some of these are going to start getting more valuable as time progresses. Yeah, right? these like, old these old 600 series, 700 series, yeah. there's there's people that, that want them, there's people that are looking for them, and they're hard to find. Yep. So if you, if you get your hands on one, then, then hang on to it. They are. They're really cool. So, yeah. and this is the thing. So. I I remember when I first started seeing Wii knives, right? Like amazing titanium construction. You guys were using some really premium steel, still do. Again, all of these things are still mm -hmm. true, but there were just, there was a lot of colors. There was a lot of lines. There was a lot of really interesting. Yeah. I mean, so you know, you have something like, now remind me what's the model number on this one? That one's gonna be the 706 or 704 right in there. Right in there, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like another great example, right? Like you have some carbon fiber, which is great, but then you have kind of this like louder anodized mm -hmm. titanium. Obviously you have the titanium pocket clip. And then even like, even back then, you guys were still doing these amazing little touches of just like matching this backspacer with like the blade, yeah. right? And that's something that's so cool with Wii and Civivi knives is there's always a little touch. There's always something to pay attention to. The attention to detail is always there. It's always there. Yeah. And I love that. I absolutely love that. So even though some of this early stuff really wasn't my jam, mm -hmm. I still loved looking at it. Yeah. I was like, man, I don't think I'd own this, but I really love looking at it, right? One of my favorite things is when people come up to us at a show and they'll pull out they'll pull out a knife and they've always got like this, this smirk on their face, you know, and yeah. they'll, they'll check this out and flip it out and it'll be like an old 601 or, you know, a yeah. 604 or whatever. And, and I'm like, yes, like, I love that. And they'll have these beautiful, like dual beveled, like Tonto tips and just awesome, like really cool design that was what they started with. And it's really, really neat. Yeah. Yeah, which is so cool to see because you know a lot of times knife companies will start off and, and this is something we're gonna get into is you guys pump out design after design yes. after design which is wild and we're gonna get into the designers because you guys work with some world-class designers um, but when we're talking about designs this was an in-house design is that correct if I yes. remember correctly yes and what's the name on this it's one called the double helix double helix yeah yeah this was one of the one kind of as we started naming the knives yes we got a name and this was I think this was the first wee knife that I was like I want that mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. was like the double helix and it's so cool it's not an axis lock but the best way to describe it for you guys at home is it's kind of like an axis lock in that you pinch this like you know this that's how it works the piece action right here the action is yeah. as an axis lock yeah so you pull down here that's how you close it and that's how you open it which right. is really cool right and this was another really cool thing showing what we's capable of of I mean this is essentially like a clear scale showing how something works, but there's no right. scale. Right. right, the innovation is awesome. Putting yeah. the spring on the outside of the knife and letting you see all that kind of a steampunkish look mm -hmm. and vibe to it, I like this one a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like that you said steampunk because I think that some of these designs, again, you'll see some of this wildness and you'll see some of that, like, like you could like pick a thing where you're like, oh, it's kind of that aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that because it's not obnoxious. And mm -hmm. nothing against my steampunk guys out there. Steampunk's not my jam. <laughs> and uh, and so like that's what I loved about the double helix is it was it was unique, it was innovative. 
Uh, I mean, it still is. It's still like mm -hmm. this really unique, interesting knife. You know, do you guys still make the double helix? No, you don't. Oh, no. that's unfortunate. God, I love this thing. It's so <laughs> know, much fun. Right? Uh, and of course, we can't talk about early Wii without talking about early Civivi. Right. right. So Civivi came like two years after Wii. Okay. Yeah. 2016. Yeah. So it's interesting. This is our nine-year anniversary, right? Right. The company was established in 2014. Yeah. Um, but came from a long line of OEM work and manufacturing expertise, like which is why they were able to just like start a brand and boom. Yeah, like, like day one they're nailing it because yeah, they've been doing all yeah, this OE work, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Praxis, the Backlash um, kind of like started it off. Yeah. Here we've got one of the original Praxis knives and then just model after model after model. <laughs> the Bull Mastiff was one that came um, <laughs> Not too far after. Yeah, yeah. And I, the Bull Mastiff is actually a fan favorite. Like, yes. I, I still hear guys today that are like, yeah, no, I love my Bull Mastiff. But again, it definitely kind of, a, especially for when it came out, definitely kind of a weird knife, right? But like, you can definitely see with the Civivis, this movement towards something that was just like a little more maybe practical, right? Mm -hmm. Like a little more like, oh yeah, I'd carry that. Yeah. And the really cool thing is because those early Wii's, and you guys still have stuff in your lineup that's that's spendy for good reason, because mm -hmm. of the work mm -hmm. going into it. That was a really cool thing about Civivi is you could get that Wii quality in a budget knife, right? Right. Because I think this Praxis originally was like 40, 50 bucks. Still is. Yeah, yeah still yeah. is. Yeah, and then same with the Bull Mastiff, it was mm -hmm. like 50, 70 or something like that, like right in that price range, you know? Yep. And for you guys at home, if you haven't seen the early Praxises up close, you might be looking at the Praxis and you might be like, oh yeah, that's a pretty normal looking knife. But something that Civivi was doing early on were these these like gold liners. Yeah. And it was so funny because I remember seeing the Praxis the first time and I was like, that's it, that's the thing. Because it was before the Elementum, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, that's the thing, right? And then I saw the liners and I was like, oh, that's not that's the thing not for the me. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> and not that it's bad. Again, I have to be clear, like, you know, we're on Zack in the Wild, right? So these are my preferences, right? I know a ton of people love this early Praxis. Mm -hmm. And you guys are still doing a ton with the Praxis still. Yes, right? it's it's been it's always been one of our best-selling models. Yeah, we're still releasing new versions of it today. Yeah. Like we just recently released this beautiful burlap micarta mm -hmm. that's got a nice coarse grip to it. Um, it's got black liners. Yeah. So it's gone away from the original styling, but it's still the exact same model, and it's still in that like forty dollar <sighs> price range. It's, wild. it's incredible. It's, it's a wild, great model. Yeah, what you guys are able to do in the price ranges that you operate is absolutely amazing. And don't worry, we're not leaving out the elementum. We're going to get there because the elementum is right. absolutely incredible. Now you talked a little bit about like starting out with the OE work and that's kind of what I've understood, um, you know, having sit down with with Joe and everybody who's part of the main operation at mm -hmm. Wii, right, is it was kind of a bootstrap story. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like they were working for other people, you know, Joe was doing his own thing and he's like, wait, I can do this, yeah. right? And then yeah. now you guys are making some of the best knives, some of the best production knives out there. And again, I'm not saying that just because I'm in your studio. I say this all the time <laughs> when I'm looking at Wii knives on the channel. It's just a fact, right? And I've been saying it for years. I mean, we've yeah. been on YouTube for a long time. Yeah. I've been saying it for years. So that brings us to working with designers. Mm -hmm. And you guys work with, again, just some of the best designers out there. So we have uh, some examples here. So like, what, like, what's one of your favorites here? What's, what, like, let's highlight one of these. One of my favorites here is, has got to be the Mini Buster. Okay, yeah, um, this, Snacks Design, right? Snacks Design, yeah. yeah. So this was the first one that we did with Snacks. Um, the Mini Buster has done very, very well for us. Still in production, we still release new versions of this. It's reminiscent of the earlier Wii stuff with all of that extensive millwork, the beautiful design on it. Yeah. I just love this knife, right? Yeah. And then we had the Vision R. And this, right? this is so cool because going back to that double helix, right? Going back to those roots, this shows also just some cool stuff that we can do, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because the lock system on this, right? Yeah, the yeah, super yeah. lock system that Snacks designed and put on here. Um, the This is just a, another unique design, super slim. It's got the pocket clip coming out of the back on the spine. Um, very, very different, very unique style. It's done very well. And it's just, that's one of the fun things about working with different designers, though, is that we get a real variety in what we do. Yeah. Like, we have a ton of different stuff here that it looks different, it works different, it's, it's fun to have that much variety. Yeah, and again, it it's this one's really fun too for me because um, I actually even just did it today because it's been a long time since I handled this knife. Mm -hmm. And I was like, for you guys who haven't seen this, I was like, how does this close? Because it's kind of like a back lock. You can kind of see the locking mechanism yeah. through the hole. And I kept pushing on the back and I handle a lot of knives and I consider myself a knife guy and I'm like, <sighs> and I finally had to ask Seth, I was like, can you remind me how this closes? So for you guys at home that don't know, it is it is similar to a back lock, is that fair to say? like? Ish, yeah, kind, yeah, kind of, of, like kind of, but it, not like really strong locking. It's not going to open with it in your hand, but uh, you just pull up on the back tab. Yeah, and and the cool thing is, is it's like almost no effort to get that up, which is so rad. And again, highlighting uh, like just what we's able to do is, is you're able to do all of these 
interesting designs, all of these designs from amazing designers like Snacks, mm -hmm. right? Um, cutting edge stuff, but do it all really well. I don't think that I've ever seen a Wii knife or a Civivi knife that missed as far as just fit and finish goes which yeah. is saying a lot, like I've handled a lot of knives and yeah. saying a lot, right? Um, but I mean, you guys, you know, like, uh, this is uh, Lundquist design, right? Zinker. Zinker, sorry, this is the Lundquist That's, design. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Because it has the front flipper on it. Yep. Yeah, there we go. And so, which, yeah. which, Justin Lundquist does some of the best front flippers All that day. there are. Yeah. It's just incredible. He is the king, yeah. Yeah, the stuff that he has done, and that's one of the things, again, that I love about working with these custom designers is they push us, right? We've got the Black Void Opus right here. It's got um, some interesting grinds, chisel grinds, very, very unique construction. We've got uh, the other one that he did with us just recently, the Eidolon, yeah. is an integral knife with a pocket clip that is just like somehow coming out of the back with, it's like not even attached. It's, he, he, it's like crazy stuff, right? That yeah. he makes on these custom designs and then we we do production versions of them and bring them to the market and it's so different and it's so fun. So yeah, we've got Black Void Opus right here. This is the Brad Zinker Miscreant 3.0. Again, it's a, a version of his custom yep. that we're able to bring in a production level to the market and it's just so fun. Yeah, and you know, you're alternating between frame locks, liner locks, weird snack locks, right? Yeah. Like like yeah. all sorts of interesting locks as well when you go through that. Now, one of the designers uh, that you guys worked with that for me, I think he was the designer that I first saw and like put a name to a Wii knife that wasn't mm -hmm. just an in-house Wii design. Because yes. that's the other thing that you guys have to realize is all of the Wii and Civivi knives you see that don't have a name tied to them, they're obviously in-house designs. And I could, I'm, you guys probably have in-house designers at this point, but I know a lot of them were attributed to Joe, the founder. Yes, and like, most of them still are. Yeah, it's like one dude who's pumping out a ton, well, almost one dude who's pumping out a ton of he's running. He's running the company, Yeah, multiple factories, yeah. and pumping out hit after hit after hit <laughs> it really these is. designs. Yeah. It's incredible. It's really, really awesome stuff. One of the designers that was tied with you guys first that was a name I put to Wii, but also in the early days really felt like a Wii knife, right? Mm -hmm. Was Elijah Isham, yes. right? And uh, and we have to recognize Elijah has passed away since, yeah. which is very sad. But like some of these, this is the Eschaton, mm -hmm. is that correct? So like the Eschaton, I remember when I first saw this, I was like, oh yeah, that's a Wii knife. But then it was like, oh, that's an Isham knife as well. Yeah. And I like, so for me, Isham and Wii was something that really went together in the early days where I was like, oh, if I see an Isham or I see a Wii knife, it was just like, oh yeah, it's like same, same, right? Yeah. Not same, same, but same, same, right? Elijah had such an interesting way with his lines. He had such an interesting way with his designs. And like I was saying earlier, I think Wii knives really was responsible for breaking the knife world out of some of these molds that we had been in, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know, we were coming out of this like big tactical phase in the knife world when we kind of hit the scene. And then you see something like this and like, in my mind, this is a showpiece. And you're seeing a production company creating something this wild and being brave enough to work with somebody like Elijah who's doing all these really weird designs, right? Yeah. And I loved it. And we yeah. had a handful um, at the beginning of designs with Elijah as well. Yeah. So we had the Eschaton, we had the Arrakis, we have the, in the Civivi line, we have the McKenna. Yep. There was a couple more in the Wii knife line. But yeah, we had, we had a handful, a bunch of knives in the beginning and they're all really interesting, unique designs. Yeah, they really were. And I love that. And again, it was a production company that was willing to go out on a limb and work with somebody who had these really interesting designs, mm -hmm. right? Um, and Elijah, like the Arrakis, right? Like his inspiration was coming from this really cool, like sci-fi world, like Arrakis from the movie Dune. If you haven't watched the original one, watch the new one's really good. So yeah, like I just, I loved seeing that, right? Um, and then, you know, you you guys got in with like Ferrum Forge, mm -hmm. right? And Ferrum Forge, especially when you guys started working with them, they were being recognized a lot for their custom work, mm -hmm. right? And you guys, again, were producing these production versions of these amazing knives. And this is a this is a newer one because it has the button lock, right? That's right. Because originally it was a frame lock. There was a larger yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. There was the Malice. It yeah. was a larger with frame lock. Yeah, yeah. Same style. We have the Odium that came out before this one yep. in Civivi line, a little bit smaller. Then we have this Mini Malice that um, added the button lock. But everything from Fair and Forge just, just sells. Everything oh, yeah. from Fair and Forge, the design is there. Yep. Um, the functionality, usability is there. So we've really, really enjoyed working with Ferrum Forge. Yeah, and that's one thing with the Ferrum Forge is that was where I started to see kind of this, like uh, working more into something that I personally would EDC yeah. every day, right? Like I think it was probably that first Ferrum Forge collaboration in with Wii that I was like, oh, okay, like I'm gonna get that in the pocket, right? Yeah. And I was in an opportunity at that point where I had access to like every knife, which was really cool. And so I could carry whatever I wanted. And I, a lot of Wii knives ended up getting stuck in my pocket. Um, now, this is Gavco design, That's right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So Gavco design here. Um, obviously Gavco design, I mean, right in that realm with snacks, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. just amazing cutting edge design stuff. 
The thing with this is this was another thing that we has done that um, I haven't seen anywhere else. It probably is somewhere else. There's a lot of knives out there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but this flame coating that you guys put on mm -hmm. titanium, I absolutely love it because it's grippy. It's, it's there's something I don't yeah. know how they get the texture in it, but it takes like uh, I'm not a big titanium guy because I, I like something with a really solid purchase. Um, that's why I'm a Micarta guy, right? Mm -hmm, like, or G10, mm -hmm. of course. And there's something about this flame finish you guys do on all your knives, not just this Gapco design, that make them like grippy. It's yeah, the weirdest it, thing. And it's it's really interesting because you feel it and it's smooth. Yeah. But it's almost like it's a, I describe it as like rubberized. It's yeah. Al you almost, it almost <laughs> feels like it's got like a little bit of rubber texture that to it. That is literally a perfect way. It does. It like, that's a perfect, I've never thought about it that, but it's perfect. It's a perfect way to describe but it's, it. Yeah. But it's it's really weird. It just takes the raw titanium, yeah. you take a little torch and you put that little flame on there and and something chemically makes it grip that's different. So and it's, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, because you're right to say, when I say grippy, it is, it's still completely smooth, mm -hmm. right? And it, I, I'd be like a flat finish, but flat doesn't describe it right. Rubberized, yeah. that's the yeah. way to say it, even it's though it's not. But it's it, not. Yeah, 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 no, that's perfect. <laughs> I love that you had the words for it. That's why we're here, guys, because he has the words for it. Um, okay, so when we're we're talking about designers, um, you know, you know, we're looking at, you know, Aisham and Snacks, and we're looking at these kind of like interesting, a little bit out there designs, right? right? That I think really went well with that, those, that early we, reality, right? And then and then you're you're creating some stuff that's uh, I'm not going to say more practical. These are super usable knives, right? Mm -hmm. But you're creating stuff that's uh, a little more standard, maybe a little more boring, I guess. That's another word. None of them are boring, but you know, you could say that. Um, so when we're talking to designers, I really saw that with ob the obvious one is the in-house design in Civivi line with the Elementum. Mm -hmm. And obviously the Elementum, you guys knocked it completely out of the park with the yeah. Elementum. Like this has become the budget knife period, right? And there are a lot of great budget knives out there, definitely not knocking any of them, but if we're just looking at units sold, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like the Elementum out of all of the knife companies currently, the Elementum's gotta be kicking butt, right? Absolutely, um, absolutely. And this is this is actually a, a new new, right? This one here? Right, so uh, I'm, it seems like it's been a while since we had a new version of the Elementum, and yeah. it's probably only been like, three or four months. Right, but right. No, here's the thing, guys. We're sitting here, and I recently featured the Reaver on the channel, uh, which is a big wee knife. We're actually gonna look at it here in just a second, because I love it. Um, but we're talking, and I'm like, yeah, the Reaver, that's like a new one, right? He's like, I don't know, it's pretty old. And I'm like, didn't it just come out? And he's like, yeah, it came out like four months ago. Because this is what you guys, like, <laughs> we is pumping out so, we and Civivi are pumping out so many designs every month that poor Seth, who's like, helping all this stuff come to light. He's touching like, what, eight, 10 new knives a month? All, yeah, all the time. Just awesome. crazy new knives. Yeah. So yeah, like when you're looking at a knife that's just a couple months old, for Seth, it's old, even though for us, it's brand new. <laughs> still new, still new, but but old. Yeah, so this is out then. Yeah, yeah this, this, is, yeah, this yeah. is, so this right here, this is not out not yet. Not out yet, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, probably right around the time this video comes out or a couple weeks after. Cool, cool. So it's a, it's a, same thing as um, all the other elements, but yeah. a new, new scale pattern. Great, um, perfect. Frag pattern on the white G10. Cool. There's like, 30 different uh, variations of the Elementum. Oh yeah, there's right now. like, yeah, if you want an Elementum and you have like a preference, I, they're probably already making it in your preference. So definitely get one if you don't have one. The Elementum though, this was the first Wii Civivi knife. For me, I was just like, okay, all day. Like this mm -hmm. is the thing all day, like no question. Um, and dude, we, we've talked about this knife ad nauseum. I feel like this is the first knife that started transitioning some of the Wii and Civivi designs into like, I don't want to say boring because they're not boring, but like standard, right? Mm -hmm. Like just more like you look at it, you're like, that's a knife and you don't have to like overcome something where you're like, that's a knife and it's a Klingon, like a Klingon would own it. You know what I mean? Right. Like in the best way possible. I think from the Elementum, another big one when we're talking about designers, in-house design with the Elementum. Mm -hmm. And then uh, of course, our both of our buddies, Ben, right? Yep. Uh, he does the banter, yep. right? And I feel like the banter was another thing that helped kind of influence we in with design, right? This last year specifically, I've, I've seen a lot of it, yeah. right? So the banter would be one and obviously a great designer. We're not gonna talk a lot about Ben because Ben's our friend, he's on the channel a lot. So love you, Ben. <laughs> you the, guys already know. The man who needs no introduction <laughs> he needs, anyway. He needs no introduction anyways. Um, and that walks us into designs like this from we. So uh, yeah. remind me of the name on this one. This is called the Beacon. The Beacon, yeah, yeah. So the Beacon like, you know, titanium construction. Uh, do you know the blade steel on this on the job? 20 CV blade steel. 20 CV blade, which again, always using great blade steels. You know, deep carry titanium pocket clip. You got the titanium frame lock. Everything you'd anticipate from Wii, but just in like a really simple. Just there we go. Very basic. Yeah, yeah. Basic, yeah. S like a simple package. And it makes sense because Wii built a name on high quality, 
um, really unique design and things like that. And, and people wanted it. Yeah. People want to own it. And it's it's fantastic design, but it's expensive when when you're talking about a knife that you're going to carry every day you know if you yeah. depending on depending on the type of a knife guy you are maybe it's expensive to you maybe it's yeah, not true right <laughs> but you know three four hundred dollars for some of these knives and then the banter came along yeah right and ben threw this massive wrench in like the whole system yep <laughs> it was like what a buck thirty 130 dollars yeah, exactly. right <laughs> and and so now we have this this wee knife that that came down here and it sold very very well yeah um, several reasons that we you know uh, that it sold well we says well there's a lot of people out there that would like our stuff let's try and make some stuff that's a little bit more basic it's not gonna have the intricate milling you know and, and that kind of stuff yeah, or like right the, yeah the crazy like hey look at all of the, this amazing work we've done into this right because mill times expensive it is yeah, yeah yeah it is and so so there was a, a handful of more basic designs that came out yeah um, this is one of them the subjugator is is one of them yeah um, which is one of my favorite knives um, to, to carry and use, yeah, and it and it came out right along in that same kind of time period. Yep, um, you know you've got your bent titanium pocket clip and very basic. Although you've got um, on this version, you still got a little bit of bling to it, right? This is what I was gonna say is we're talking about basic here, but I don't want to talk down the fact that you're still putting so much quality into it, right? Yeah. Like you don't have all the mill lines and all that stuff, but you still have the chamfered edges, mm -hmm. right? You still have like this incredible action. You still have all of the ergonomics and consideration for how it actually fits in somebody's hand. And that's what I love to see, like, yeah. is, is okay, sure, less mill time, but it didn't mean that we're gonna lose out on detail, right? Yep. Um, which which is just exactly, when I think of we, I think that's what I think of, is quality and detail, yep. right? Yeah. My all-time most carried knife from yeah. we yeah, yeah, is yeah. the Kite Fin. And it's very, very similar. Yep. Very, very slim, nice profile, um, and it's got a nice hollow ground blade, very lightweight, but it's pretty basic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It just feels good. It's made good. It's got great, uh, great geometry, great dimensions. Oh yeah. Everything about it. And and again, right? Like two-way reversible pocket clip. So mm -hmm. you're still considering that the the bronzed hardware, the pocket clip that then has the bronzed accents inside of the yeah. the speed holes on the pocket yeah. clip, right? Yeah. Like it's still all there, even though it's simpler. And that's why when I was saying at the beginning of this thing is like we and Civivi literally make something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't like a Wii or Civivi knife, chances are like if there's not one that you don't like, chances are you don't like knives <laughs> because like <laughs> like that's just a fact because there's so many options. That's you know one of I mean? my one of my favorite things about our customers, our fans, and, and knife people in general is like if we release a knife that is not for them or that yeah. they don't like or that has a speed hole where they think there shouldn't have been <laughs> right. a speed yeah. hole, yeah. they're personally offended, yeah, exactly. you know? <laughs> it's like we just, it's like we did it to them, we did it to you, you know? Right. You know, we, we made this knife and- To we, make you angry. Yeah. <laughs> but next month we're gonna have three more. Exactly. You know? And- Well, and, and <laughs> variants too, right? Yes. Like I, yes. if you guys haven't noticed, everything that we've looked at here, Seth's mentioned, oh, and it comes in this and this and this, or, oh yeah, and we did this and this and this. Because the reality of it is not just the Elementum. I think a lot of us know that the Elementum, probably the banter, I think all of us know comes in a million variations, mm -hmm. right? Um, but almost every single knife on the table has come in at least one other variation, if I'm not yes. wrong. Yes, right? everyone will, everyone. Yeah, um, yeah. The average is probably four. Yeah, so, <laughs> so just imagine all the knives, we, just the ones we have on the table, multiply that by four, and that's not, literally, it's not even like a quarter of that's just like a little tiny, catalog. Tiny piece. It's like a little sliver of Wii's catalog. So when we do offend you by releasing something that's not perfect, yeah. don't worry. Just it's, hold on. It's not, it's not that we did it on purpose <laughs> for you, but there will be something very, very soon that you exactly. like, I promise. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're releasing so many knives a month, right? right. Like, um, okay, so the Reaver. So the Reaver's here mainly because I really like it. And right. I was like, right. I was like, I just got back off the road. I literally just flew in and came over here to the studio. So the Reaver, I think, is a great like amalgamate amalgamation amalgamation. That sounds right. Amalgamation. It's a great coming together mm -hmm. <laughs> of early we and current we, mm -hmm. right? Because you ha do have a lot of the millwork on yes. this knife, right? Yes. Um, you do have like this really interesting blade shape that I just love and I've just been gravitating to a ton. You've got the titanium pocket clip, the frame lock, all the little details that you get. And I think this knife, I think this knife only goes, well, only. I know that this is expensive, but when we're talking early we to now, I think this knife is like 230, but, 240, 260. Yeah, mid 200s. Mid 200, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a limited edition. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's got that going for it. And yeah. like you said, it's kind of like a, it kind of came back. So we had like this little phase where we went through these really basic knives. Yeah, like the simpler, yeah. Simple stuff. And then, and then kind of came back and hit a few of these limited editions that, that threw it back. And mm -hmm. they've been received really well, really well also. Yeah, no, and, and that's exactly 
exactly it is this was a knife that, uh, you know, we started working together. So we're like, okay, cool. Like give us some knives. We can take a look at stuff. And this was one in the Wii line that I just really gravitated towards. And I've been carrying it a ton. Like the blade weight of it is so awesome. Like the way it opens and closes, blade to handle ratio. We just featured it in a big knives video if you guys want more of a breakdown on the, on the Reaver. Which brings us into, well, New knives to us, not new knives to Seth. Uh, <laughs> it's not even out yet, but they're old. Yeah, old, old to Seth. Um, so this brings us to some new, new stuff that yeah, you guys yeah. haven't even released yet, right? Yeah. There are two on the table that are really special. I'm gonna save those. Uh, so let's talk about uh, these ones here first. So let's kick it off with this one. Right. And yeah. So first first thing, si knife, knife size has been an evolution as well, yeah. right? So the original knives from Wii were, were larger yep. in that three and a half inch blade range. Um, some of them hitting four inches, kind of are almost four inches, right in that range. And then the, the knife world said, we want smaller knives. Yeah. Right. And so everything kind of shrunk down, got a little bit smaller. And we're now seeing a, a little bit of a trend with Wii knives and some of our releases to, to a little bit bigger, coming going back a little bit bigger. And, and we're actually seeing that out there as well. Like we're seeing a lot of you guys in the comments are talking about bigger knives, mm -hmm. right? So it's cool to see some of these, right? Yep. So this is a brand new one, uh, not quite out yet as of this us video. right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, probably within a couple of weeks of it coming out. Um, we've got another similar one here that is out. This is called the Exiton. Um, the Exiton and the Xiphius that you have here, so we can dual hold them here, um, are very, very similar, but a little bit different. Obviously, massively different in the blade shape. Yeah. Handle shape is almost the same. You've got the same styling with this integral back spacer um, that's uh, titanium here and carbon fiber here. Um, the handle shape is very similar. But I love what's going on here with the different colors, the different materials, and the, the button lock action on these things is really, really good. Yep. Um, and a little bit larger blades. So kind of kind of moving back into a little bit more complex design, um, material work, and uh, larger knives. Yeah. Well, and I would say like when we compare this with this 600 series that we have here, like if you look, if you compare the two larger, but I think one of the things that categorized some of these early Wii knives was they were a little chunky, mm -hmm. right? And again, because. Mm -hmm. At this at this point, the knife world was kind of coming out of that tactical phase, mm -hmm. and a, you had a lot of chunky knives out there, right? And so, even though you have a larger knife, this is still I would still call this a lot more ergonomic for me personally, um, because it's just it's a little bit thinner in hand, it's a little bit smoother, it's a little bit just a little more streamlined, maybe yeah. a little more streamlined. That's mm -hmm. the word, yeah, a little more streamlined. Both really cool, though. Yeah. Uh, so with that, uh, I will say that you guys, I mean, I I don't want to keep like just tooting the horn, but I did an entire video on Wii and CVV button locks because they're, they're, they're awesome. Good, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I've i played with them a ton. I've played with a ton of different versions. Obviously, these are the first ones I've handled. Um, but I think I think that's what categorizes Wii and CVV in my mind because I'm like the knife guy with my friends. I'm the knife guy, my family, all that. Mm -hmm. So people come to me and talk to me, you know, like, hey, what about this knife? What about that knife? There are a lot of great knives out there. And I suggest a lot of knives that aren't Wii and CVV, obviously. There's a lot of great knives, right? But if somebody's asking me like, hey, I've got money and I want to spend money on a knife, I have a list, right? Mm -hmm. And at the top of that list, it's Wii. Wii's at the top of that list because I know I can say, yeah, go get this knife and I know they're going to get it and they're going to get it out of the box and there's not going to be a problem. Yeah. Like I've never seen a problem with a Wii. And I'm sure that they happen, right? Production, blah, blah, blah. But I've never seen one and I think it's amazing. Right? Yeah, it's it's incredible. Yeah. And this this one right here, the Xiphius, just, um, we just had it down at the Blade Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just won the best folder and best in show award there for the factory production. Awesome, awesome. right on. So um, it's not just so me saying it, while I'm sitting yeah. here, but you guys heard me say it not here. <laughs> the knife world also agrees with what we're saying. Um, okay, cool. And then uh, another Wii knife. This is new, new as well. Another right? brand new, yeah, yeah. Um, coming out very, very soon. And again, kind of going back to larger, larger I knives. I love the blade on that one. This one is this one is really cool. Yeah, yeah. the blade shape is awesome. Um, it's this new finish for us. Um, it's a, a rubbed satin, hand rubbed satin finish on oh, there. That's okay. really, really cool. cool. Yeah. Um, you've got some really cool, uh, the one thing I love about these knives, the more you look at them, the more they got going on, right? Oh yeah. Because you, you get in there close and you can see that it's got this little micro milling in the handle. But look at this, way back in the 620 oh, series. yeah, yeah, yeah. Same kind of thing. That was something else that I noticed in the early Wii's, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you pointed that out because I didn't see it until you just yeah. said it is that milling, that micro milling in the handle obviously adds cost, mm -hmm. right? Again, going back to grip, like it adds mm -hmm. just a little bit of grip to the knife where it's not just the slippery piece of yep. titanium. So yep. it's really cool to see it here in a new model. Yeah. Like, I love it, yeah, yeah. You've got milling in the backspacer as well. Um, you've got that milled titanium clip, just 
Well, and awesome the stuff. yeah, like inlays, all these little like the, like inlays, carbon and, fiber inlays in the frame yeah. lock. And then when you're talking about milling on the on the back here, it's not just milling. It's like all of this work that you get like that has been done here. Like ah, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. This is something perfect, that I, perfect fit and finish. Yeah, this always. is this is something that I love about Wii. Like it's just it, there's always something to look at. And we and Civivi, there's always something to look at. So when you get one of these knives, you really have to investigate them because yeah. there's always something cool. Um, and again, the micro milling, I didn't even realize. Yeah, that one's it. called the Magnetron. That one comes Magnetron. out. comes out soon. Magnetron. Magnetron. That's such a great name. Is this is this uh, in-house design? It is. Do you have any idea where the name came from? Magnetron. Terrell. What? Wait, Terrell? Ter what? Terrell names the knives. Oh. <laughs> I was like, is that like a show I'm not aware of? <laughs> no, uh, I, don't, I don't know where his inspiration came from yeah. on that particular knife, but I think it's fitting. That's cool. No, I love it. Magnetron. It's perfect. Um, oh, and then we have a couple new Civivis as well, right? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. Uh, this, is a, this is one of my, also one of my favorite knives to carry is the Altus. Altus, right? so yeah. Altus has been around for a little while. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the button lock thumb set action on this is just so, so good. Um, but what's new is it's in aluminum. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we haven't done aluminum previously. We've got a handful of models that are coming out in aluminum. The Altus is one of the first, and it's really, really good. It feels premium, and so the Altus in aluminum is... Cool, right that's on. Yeah, that's awesome. I actually hadn't realized you guys, because you guys know a lot in stainless. Um, yes. I yes. It never categorized you guys hadn't done something in aluminum. That's really cool. So also in aluminum. Yep, the uh, Civivi Quibit. The Quibit, okay. And this is new, new, right? Quibit doesn't sound familiar to me. Right. Yeah, okay, right. cool, yeah, yeah. Also coming out just right around the same time as this video. Cool, perfect, right? Button lock, thumb stud. Aluminum. Button lock, thumb stud, reversible, uh, deep carry clip that's milled on both sides. It's uh, it's a good one. That, it's that's very, very similar to the Elementum shape, but yeah. a different blade shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it definitely has like a, a little bit of that Elementum vibe. Yeah, right? in the handle. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that you guys, because again, you you were one of the first that I saw in production regularly doing kind of that inset deep carry pocket clip. And I love that you have that milled out and like ready for it. Yep. That's cool for- Ready for to swap it over. Yep. Yeah, it's awesome, awesome. All right, um, now I had uh, I had teased that there were some things on the table people would expect. And I think when you look at this, you're like, oh yeah, we used to be, that makes sense, right? Like some exciting stuff. It's cool to see the micro milling. It's cool to see the aluminum handles. Um, but this one, this wee knife, I love it. And I'm going to call it the everything, but I don't know what the actual name is. So so what is it and what what's on it? Okay. <laughs> what's not on it? Yeah, what's that? And what's not on it, I guess. <laughs> this is the this is the Murata. It's a limited edition. The came out, it came out in about 5 different variations. Okay. Yeah. And this is the most extensive yeah. uh, of the variations. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. We've got it's called uh, the Murata. This one right here, we're going to have to get some close shots of this. Yeah. We've got the the Dama steel blade. Yep. Right, because people like Dama steel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool right? stuff. The tiger stripe flame titanium, like that uh, Gavco. Yeah, that we the, looked at, the grippy. Right? What we call the kind of grippy right? titanium. People like yeah. that. Yep. Yep. Nebulous, nebula, carbon or fat carbon. Yep. People like that. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Polished, flamed titanium on the uh, milled pocket clip. And backspacer. Yep. Because people like that, right? Yep. Yep. I love it. So, I love it. So you put them all together. Yep. And what's not to love? <laughs> it's so loud. It's so good. And it's I, so good. Yeah, and I love it. I love how loud it is. It's just awesome. And this is so. This is a limited edition, then. It is. Okay. Cool. Cool. There's That's there's really like 150 cool. of these. Oh wow. So yeah, if you guys want yeah. one, I'm I'm sure it comes. I'm sure it comes with a price tag. Uh, any idea what's general uh, price on the Dama steel? On the Dama steel, yeah. it's gonna be north of 600, but I don't yeah. know exactly. Yeah, off I imagine. The top of my head. I imagine. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a. I mean, that's a collector's piece right yeah. there. Like, yeah. That's a lot. A lot of stuff going on. I'm just gonna refer to it as the everything because I like. Literally, we were like looking at knives and we're like talking beforehand. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, let's kind of do it in this order. And then he's like, yeah, there's this one, and I'm like, do you have that? And he's like, I think I have one. <laughs> so. Here we are. <laughs> and if this isn't for you, if this offended you yeah. in any way, yeah. there is a version that's that's uh, different. Right? Great, perfect. You know, we've got some. We've got some more basic where we've got like the um, the beautiful carbon fiber with the uh, copper foil inlays cool. in it. Yeah, right? yeah. Layered. It's it's really really good. Yeah. You know, with the black blade and that kind of thing. So this one this one is loud. It's yeah. it's the everything knife, and mm. I I love it. And we'll have links for everything down below, guys. So you guys can click on this, check it out, and you can even go to the category and check out the other Maradas if you're just into the shape of the knife. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, when I say that we in CVV, if, if, if they make basically one of everything, they make a type of everything. Um, I'm definitely not joking because this new Civivi knife, yeah. it's out there. 
and it, like, but in the best way. So, so for me, this this is a knife that this is a collector's piece. This is this is something that if you know if you want something premium, you got some money to spend. If you're just looking for something that's extra, boom, Murata, right? But then. If you just want something to beat up and what? look rad. <laughs> so this is the Civivi what? This is called the Arat, Aratra, Aratra? Aratra? Arat. So hang on, let me get the box. Hey, well, you gotta show the box, I actually. Do, I do have to show the box. Because unboxing this is like unboxing an Apple product. It's, right? like, a, it's like a MacBook. <laughs> it's like what it comes in, which is so cool. So yeah, it looks like Aratra. Yeah. Aratra. Yeah, yeah. Aratra. And you know how the like, cereal boxes will put little pieces of cereal on it and they'll say like enlarged to show texture? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is this is not <laughs> enlarged to show texture. So this what? is this is actual size. Yeah, it's actual size on this. And was this is this a design by somebody or is this an in-house? This is Torbay Nice. Torbay Nice. Okay, yep. cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, what more needs to be said than what you're seeing <laughs> to be said? But it looks like uh, G10 handles. G10 handles. Yeah, yeah. D2 steel. Oh, D2. Yeah. Oh, it's getting better. <laughs> it's just getting better. <laughs> um, any idea? I mean, is this supposed to just be like a fun, big, like, you know, let's have some fun with this knife, or or any idea on like the design ideas I, behind I it? I talked to I talked to Torbay when we got this to make sure yeah. that I presented it properly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then I and then I took it out and I like cut down trees yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you have it. to. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, and I, I said, but is this how this is supposed to be used? Because this is what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said, he said, yeah. He says that should be like an everything kind of a camp knife. He says cool. uh, from from like a you know you've got like your Ulu style. Yeah, that's, um, I was for, kind of seeing the Ulu for, stuff for food processing, yeah. that kind of a thing. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, if you need to hack up some firewood, you can do that as well. So yeah. it's kind of like your all-around camp it. knife. Ooh, and that's like that's like chamfered in there too. Yeah. So like you can you actually do want to put your thumb in there or your finger in there so you can mm -hmm. work detailed or come out here and I mean you've got chop. you got a wide chop like you'd use on a machete. You've got like this close bit, and then you've got all the way up here too for detailed work. Yeah. And then the Kydex like. I mean that takes a massive sheath to to yeah. put that thing in there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm always impressed with the work that we does, SVV does on the sheaths because yeah. the lockup is super super tight, um, and the just the fit and finish of of everything. You know, you mentioned like the chamfer on the inside of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, all of the all of the edges on the Kydex are always just just flush and perfect. They do a really really good job. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is my own. I think the only fixed blade I have from We or Civivi is the fixed blade Elementum, mm -hmm. and I think it's actually it's something that we're going to be featuring a little more on the channel because I don't think enough people are talking about that knife. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it's got the word Elementum, so it should be good. Um, and it is, it's it's a great knife in, even in practice. Yeah. Um, we've been doing some work with it. You guys will see some videos coming up soon. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have a lot of experience, but it's not surprising that the sheaths and stuff are right on par with the knives, yeah. right? And you're right on retention, that is really good. And so I just did it because I wanted to see if it would work, but there is, there's this nice, it's not it's not gonna like catch your thumb, but there is a nice place here to like ramp off yeah. if you wanted to be able to ramp off. Cause it's a lot of knife. Like, I don't know if I want to like swing it out every time, you know? I mean, I do, but <laughs> <laughs> it might not be practical every time. So yeah, so I really like how that goes. And then I'm noticing that it's set up in the scout carry, uh, which is amazing. Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just lock that on the back here and scout carry it, no problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, does, it, com it comes with the clip, the T-clip. You can figure out how you want to yeah, use that, you what you want to strap yeah, it to. Yeah, yeah. It's also got uh, the, uh, in the sheath here, you've got the little strap mm -hmm. um, slots, so you can strap that onto a pack or yeah, whatever. Yeah, strap it on the outside of your bag or whatever, yep. yeah. I wouldn't call this a backpacking knife. So this is probably like car camping, you want to practice some bushcraft, like that type of knife. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I love it, I absolutely love I it. And, it. I, and, I, and I love seeing, I, I love seeing, and, it, and if you guys haven't seen kind of through these evolutions that we've talked about, the different designers that we's working with on a constant basis, I just love seeing that you guys aren't scared to do things, Yeah. right? Like going back to the double helix or going back to like your first collaborations with Aisham, right? Like to something like this, right? Like you guys aren't scared to do cool things and like push the boundaries, yeah. which I love. Okay, cool. Well, and we even looked at, we had, I was like, hey, bring some of your favorite knives. But you kind of already yeah, showed them off. I did. You had, you yeah. had one other favorite that you had on the table there. Yeah, you know, yeah. you gotta have a small, little lightweight guy and that would be yeah. the Civivi Baby Banter. Cool, cool. This is a newer variation of it with the uh, jade scales and the black blade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's always that's always a favorite. Great knife. We, we can yeah. give, uh, we, you can give Ben the 20 bucks after that you talked about his knife on camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Ben. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, um, dude, super awesome stuff. Um, now you've got on the on your guys's website uh, is it's a twenty percent off select models. So 20, 25 percent off select models. Plus is. we got some other cool stuff going like uh, 
we, we made a custom deck of cards. Like, oh, awesome. Like Wii Civivi yeah, yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I don't have one here. Uh, oh, just, no. I, I, I was know, just right? about to ask you. I know. I don't yeah, have yeah. it here, but uh, you'll be able to have one uh, if you make a purchase on the website during our sale. Maybe we can uh, get our hands on some or a picture or something. We'll do something now. <laughs> That's the beauty of Jamie it. being behind right. the camera. He knows what's going on, you know. He's like, oh, I gotta go find pictures. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so but playing yeah, cards, playing cards, twenty five percent with a twenty nine dollar purchase. So oh, basically, easy. you buy anything, yeah. you're gonna get that. Yeah, easy. Um, some other cool things. We've got nine days of giveaways that we're doing. So all week awesome. long, uh, we're giving away knives online. So Savivi.com for nine days of giveaway for yep. nine years of anniversary. And then are you guys doing anything on social as well? Right, so on social, we don't have any of our actual giveaways or anything like right. that going on. It's a landmine with social and giveaways. It's like bots and all that. Crap. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. <laughs> but you'll be, but follow the social so that you will be aware of what's going on on the website. You know, cool. we'll, we'll, throw, we'll be throwing out stuff that tells you to go to the website. Yeah. We do have another cool um, promotion on the website. Okay, yeah. Um, we're taking purchases yeah. and dropping, it's, it's Slightly complicated to, just to say it. Okay. okay. Yeah. You make a purchase on the website during yeah. our promotion, and each day we're going to take one order and we're going to refund it down to a total of nine dollars. So basically, if you okay. spend three hundred dollars right. uh, on the purchase, you're going to get that purchase for nine bucks. Right. So if you, you're one of the winners. So if you're a winner on that on that giveaway, right, you could right. buy a two hundred fifty dollar knife and pay nine dollars for it. Yes, that's correct. I mean, I'm from Vegas, so, there so there's right? like gambling, roll, you know. <laughs> roll the dice, roll the dude. Dice. Roll the dice. You got, you got your free deck of cards. You've got um, whatever giveaways you're going on. Twenty-five percent off yeah. sale. You got giveaways, so it's it's a great time to That's shop cool. and have some fun. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, nine years of great stuff. Excited for the next nine. Um, obviously, a lot of cool stuff. Excited for next year because I'm sure ten, you guys can go even bigger. Which Absolutely. Will be super exciting. Absolutely. So hopefully, we're back here next year talking about what's going on for the ten mm -hmm. year. I think that's everything. Um, guys, let us know what your favorite Wii and Civivis are down in the comments. Thank you so much for being a supporter of the channel. We really appreciate it. Thanks for coming over. Yeah, man, it means a lot. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.